All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Jonathan Nez, president of the Navajo Nation, coming to you from Windorock, your Navajo Nation capital, to begin our town hall meeting, giving you all updates on the efforts uh, pushing uh, back on COVID-19. Uh, we've seen some increase in cases all around the country. And of course, that means that there is an uptick in cases here on the Navajo Nation as well. But before we uh, go into our updates, uh, I'd like to have our Vice President uh, Myron Leiser open us up in a word of prayer. Uh, Vice President. Sir, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Tevin and Vice President Lizer here. Um, as we always do, but we always open up in prayer. So uh, today is no different. Uh, real extreme need to uh, uh, get our matters uh, um, out there and uh, ask for blessing from our Creator. But yes, yeah, being God, we thank you, Lord, that you are God and we patient, Lord Father. We honor you this time. We ask your wisdom, Father, that your Peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord, to be made available to our people all across the land. Lord, your people are hurting. Some are sick. Some are needing a recovery. Some are needing strength. Father, we pray for you. It's dear loved one, Lord, on the nation here. That's your people, Father God. We pray a blessings upon them, grace and mercy, Lord, and uh, just healing and strength, Lord, to come upon all of our nation, for our people, Lord, as you eradicate this virus from our land. Thank you. We ask you to be with our leadership here on this town hall update, Lord. Help us to receive the, the news, the updates, the knowledge, Lord, and apply it, Lord, with your wisdom, your great wisdom. Thank you again. Be with us in this time so that the people of the land will be blessed. In Jesus' name, I yeah. God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Vice President, for the prayer. And again, good morning to everyone uh, that is watching the updates on the COVID-19 pandemic efforts. Uh, Vice President Myron Lizer, a citizen Yehad Z. Edo Hehe Shina, non Shinigin Ha, the Nani Clean Do Kudo, has Aj Office of the President Vice President. Ado Vishina Il Inigi Do Ishido Dabanasa. She will be nice in the for failures, Edo. Could all Naha Naga than a highest here, could all a than Linigi do a chin so can than Lingi. A Jehan Hanatsa or a Astasi cleaner than Anil Sukronat, Anil, Lenigi, Beshmas, and Apple. I don't hear Tratnas, Nelodo. What are a ya and Hina Nishidalia? <laughs> so, dun, dun. Uh, well, it's an, Eli, we have you on audio. You can mute yourself. Nahast Nihijikolia, Washington, 
ado ti mask that eki do chadas eh ado le niki keni ne hade shi ke da tiniki ado ye de gobis asla handa le da di ne jo evening na den del kiti asla handa le ho da shi e niki keni ne hade shi da nas bil kana bi ke ya te san da nas ado do ตาอัลตราตาอันดาคริตอเบอร์ซินดาชิเอโนซีนิซาเอยาโตชิเยโกบิตราฮันดาเดเนสเกดันเดซาชิเอคุนยิสคาดาดาคาโฮตะดีต
stay the course, especially as we begin to go into the holiday season. We got Halloween coming up. We have Thanksgiving. We have Christmas and New Year's. Look at what happened last year with the high cases. We don't want that to happen. I guess things are different now, but that doesn't also mean that we will let our guard down. Yes, we have the vaccine that helps. Yes, we also have the medicines at the hospitals to get people better quickly. But still, we are losing our loved ones. In 24 hours, there were nine people who passed away. And then just keep in mind that some of these individuals fought hard. And our thoughts and prayers go out to their families, fought this virus, been in the hospital for many days, weeks, and months. But they still succumb to the virus. You know, we have uh, relatives out there that are um, dying. And we just need to continue to protect our elders because they're in the most vulnerable population. I know there's a, a lot of misinformation about the vaccine out there. I mean, if you look at the Navajo Nation overall right now, that it, one of the reasons why we are doing so well here on Navajo is that 70% of our Navajo people, over 70% of our Navajo people that are eligible to get it. Now we got the young people from 12 uh, to 16 that are able to get the vaccine uh, is helping push back on the virus. And I just ask our citizens out there once again to ask these questions to their healthcare facilities uh, professionals, and they will answer those questions uh, utilizing science and facts. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all our people that have lost loved ones. If you can put that first slide up, Eli, gives you an idea of what we have gone through for these many months. And we're going to be uh, over 18 months now, a year and a half. We have 36,409 people who have uh, caught the, the virus, COVID-19. 34,208 have recovered. We are still getting recovery numbers. Um, there are some long-term health effects, as many of you know, from COVID-19 and our families. Some of them are going through some hardship right now. So let's pray for their recovery. Total confirmed deaths, 1,484. And there, as I said, nine, uh, deaths in 24 hours. You go to the next slide, it gives you uh, a, an overview of what we've gone through. And you can see the first, I'm going to call it the first wave. I know people don't like to hear that word, but that's what it's called in this, uh, in the epidemiology world. But right around May, you see of 2020, that increase. And then it, it decreased and we did an, a great job. Those were the times we had lockdowns. Do we, uh, that's a question. Do we need to go back to lockdowns? You know, I don't think so because it disrupts uh, commerce. It disrupts government uh, operations and we need to continue to provide those direct services. And you can see right into the holidays right there November 1st, all the way to almost uh, mid-February, just skyrocketing of cases. See, what we're trying to do is to avoid that this holiday season. And we really need your help, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, 
ahandi konashni did kusin skagi na hasta itzata. You know, you go all the way into September, you see the fluctuation of cases as we are seeing a gradual increase as we go into November. If you go to the next slide, these are the recent trends and these numbers here, or this chart is from September. These are the last 60 days. September or start of September all the way to today. And you can see the fluctuation of cases and it's starting to go up. Please stay the course. Wear your mask, social distance. Wash your hands with soap and water. Hand sanitizer usage is very important. And staying at home. And when we say stay at home, I'm not saying to, you know, be fearful. I'm saying that we just need to start planning to avoid high populated places, sometimes supermarkets. If you can plan one week of uh, food, maybe two weeks of food, you know, that way you don't have to put yourself in a a position where you're most vulnerable to catch the catch the virus. Now, if you go to the next slide, and, and I want our Navajo citizens to look at this. You know, throughout this country, that's the dark blue line. And they're coming down. Uh, I think it'll be going back up with the yesterday's numbers with the state of Arizona and New Mexico. And you can see we've done a good job. We 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 got we done a good job in early August and started going down, and then we began to see an uptick in cases. You know, I, I don't know. There's a lot of traveling going on. Uh, New Mexico Fair, the balloon event. Now the state fair in in Arizona. Maybe that's why they had six over six thousand cases yesterday. Um, the safest place to be is at home, right? Isn't that what they say? Our elders, you know, our, our, where our water is at, where our fire poker is at, is the safest place to be. And so let's to our elders teaching and we ask the Navajo people to continue to stay the course um, and to be safe to be safe and I, I see some people that are on and we want to say thank you to uh, Cindy from Glendale I'm sure Cindy is uh, following these protocols all the way in Glendale as we're trying to create uh, our own safe place here on Navo and, and, and Cindy, just be careful out there in, in Phoenix. Uh, Jonah is also on, on the web, on the WebEx today. Thank you for joining us at Cardinals tonight, Thursday, right? I appreciate Jonah and, and Jonah's positive comments. Uh, Dora Mitchell, thank you for, for being here and good morning to you as well. Uh, and my sister Wendy in Alaska with her boys, Marcus and Ray Ray, thanks for, for joining us. And I uh, saw Alaska uh, having some low numbers as well uh, in that state. But I, I just want to say too that we're all in this together. I know there are probably visitors watching today's segment. We're all in this together. If we just all begin to join forces following the protocols, we can see some of these numbers. This this COVID-19 be defeated. And it's up to all of us. It's up to the Navajo people. It's all up to our friends and our neighbors uh, to stay the course. So take care of yourself. Yeah, I can't reiterate it. And, and please stay on to listen to our epi team, Jill Jim, Dr. Jill Jim, 
uh, Captain Brian Johnson from the IHS. Del Yaz is going to have a, a presentation to let you know that, you know, where these spreads are prevalent. And they're from social gatherings, family gatherings, uh, church events, religious gatherings, traditional events, family functions, birthday parties. You would think it's gonna, it, it would be high in the schools here on Navajo, but it's not. It's because of the school districts doing a great job. If someone comes, uh, comes down with the virus at school, they isolate him and they go and get the contact tracers involved and isolate, quarantine the individual, the student and the family. And now that we have testing available, you can get tested and, you know, get your results quicker. It used to take 14 days, at least for Navajo government with 96% of our employees fully vaccinated. And Yes, can you hear me? President, can you hear me? My Wi Fi is kind of spinning. Everybody's spinning here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Vice President, please continue. Okay, all right, all right. thank you. I'm not going to put my video on, on uh, my little uh, icon here spinning, but uh, real quick, uh, no new news in the United States here on the virus. I uh, um, appreciate the ability that we're able to receive updates. So I appreciate my staff, Adam and Gabe, are giving updates on the numbers and the uh, Numbers around us, uh, the surrounding states, surrounding area, just so we have a general knowledge of that. Uh, Arizona, uh, 19 months into this pandemic, 1,156,731, 6,200 new cases. So, so tremendous spiking. Uh, in Arizona, as a state, as well, uh, doing a quick uh, drill down here for Apache County, Arizona, 14,192, 47 new cases. Navajo County, 10 new cases. Um, there in Navajo County, and lastly, making up the Tri County area of our Navajo Nation in Arizona, Coconino County, 23,091 cases, with 65 new cases here to report uh, as of yesterday. Uh, so, uh, Colorado, as you know, we own ranches in Colorado, uh, 733,343 total statewide in Colorado with 2,327 new cases. This just gives us a glimpse at what uh, the surrounding states look like around us. So, again, Arizona having 6,299, Colorado, 2,327 new cases. New Mexico has 959 new cases to report there. 
Uh, San Juan County in Northwest New Mexico there, 21,486 with 77 new cases to report. And McKinley County there, 14,938 with 87 new cases to report there. Utah, our northern neighbors there, 546,213 with 2,068 new cases to report. Southeast corner of Utah, San Juan County, there's 2,413 total cases, uh, 19 months in, and our own Utah Navajo Health Systems there reporting 1,230 with uh, no new cases to report there. So there you have it. Uh, those are the numbers and what it looks like. And so in closing, as Vice President of the Navajo Nation, I do concur with our President Jonathan Nez. I appreciate his stellar leadership as we are uh, mitigating and combating this virus here in this pandemic. Uh, this disease caused by the SARS uh, COVID-2 coronavirus has no impact on some people and is seriously debilitating or fatal for others. You know, and, that, and I think that's where the whole question comes from, right? Uh, you know, how how is this going to affect the you? Uh, but really, you know, extrapolate that out. How is it going to affect those around you, your loved ones? And that's really what this has been about. You know, infected people without symptoms which include, but are not limited to cough, fever, and difficulty breathing are capable of spreading the virus. And when you choose to get vaccinated, you're choosing protection, not only for yourself, but for your family, your teammates, your friends, your classmates, and your community, as we heard so eloquently from our president. Children ages 12 to 17 years old are eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, yet there is only one health district with more than 60% of children who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. One health district has less than 20% of children fully vaccinated. Those are just the, the latest updates here uh, as we peer around us. And lastly here, the United States economy lost 22.4 million jobs due to this pandemic. The recovery has been slower than many would have hoped, but according to recent data released by a Wallet Hub, the progress has been steady. And as we always felt like we could open up and recover safely on our own Navajo Nation, you know, uh, that's what we are, are posed up against there. So this is uh, the great catch up for our Navajo Nation to be innovators, to be builders, to be building a stronger nation here. One of them here is uh, fighting a pandemic, mitigating its effects, become healthier, uh, choose healthier eating habits, uh, healthier uh, lifestyles, and uh, you could become a little bit stronger in it, increasing your ability for your own immune system to stave off this virus. And so those are the, some of the things that you can affect change immediately. And the others, of course, our president and our, our health professionals will talk about it be to just uh, continue to stay safe, you know, again, washing your hands. So I do see some people still wearing gloves out there again, you know, at disposing of them properly, uh, masking and also, you know, just uh, uh, exercise and social distancing. And, uh, you know, continue to be safe. They're cleaning all their common touch areas. You know, how many people are still really cleaning, sanitizing every common touch area. So those are the areas where we feel like we can uh, continue to stay safe. So this has been Vice President Liza here, Comanche Nishlan Tohana, Basha's team, Auto Comanche Desiche. Basha Desiche, it's good to be with you all again. We're all wanting the best. We'll work like it depends on us. Pray like it depends on our creator God, which it does. So continue prayers from President Jonathan Nez and Vice President Myron Lizer to continue to pray for you all and our, all of our families here as we are all in this together. So thank you and God bless you and continue prayers for safety and protection. God bless. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up Dr. Jill Jim. She's our executive director for our Navajo Department of Health. She has been doing a tremendous job in helping us to continue to um, be knowledgeable to receive the latest updates and also just uh, to continue to be safe that for that's all of our wishes and she joins our prayers along with uh, our, our president and our office here for you all and so uh, i appreciate her and her leadership so um, ladies and gentlemen dr jill jim navo department of health executive director take it away thank you vice president Kihatnan, um for um the the helpful tips that we all need reminders on. So, and also Shanat Ani, President Nez as well for um, coming on to the town hall every single week to address um, the COVID-19 um, that we are still dealing with. This um, has not gone away. We are, um, 
hitting our second Halloween um, being impacted with COVID-19. So um, I have a PowerPoint up here, so I'll go over those slides. Um, so a Dr. Jill Jamin Chieto, um, donde en ese ne look on the sound continue, but she's chained or ashamed to say, hey, don't as a fan of this and a lot of John Snedo, not just on the ice and not shut out at least what her young to be given. She ain't though, did you say all the legonic at the day of this? Um, okay, had non kidney needle. So a lot of this, um, reminders that we're do we were doing is we do a monthly, um, KT and inform, and a lot of this was. Interpreted in Navajo last week um, during the KTN forum. So just look out for those Missadeen um, because that's where some a lot of these are translated for our um, grandpas and Nellies that are um, that speak mainly in Navajo. But I hope that those listening on today's town hall can help translate this and help inform people and and relatives and especially our grandmas and our grandpas and our Nellies too. So. And as a reminder, Vice President and President did mention the three W's wear your mask, watch your distance, um, wash your hands as well, and also sanitize, as he mentioned, it's still really important to um, do that as well. Another thing is just um, as a reminder, as I mentioned that Halloween is um, just around the corner this weekend. So make sure you wear your mask wherever you're going um, and travel only as necessary because our numbers are high. Yesterday we had a large amount of cases and Dell can cover that as well, but um, mask is still a mandate on the Navajo Nation. So wear it in the bus, wear it at school, um, wear it um, when you're visiting other households with family members at the grocery store, post office. So. Just as a reminder, as we know the importance that mask, wearing your mask and wear it and correct your mask correctly is important too. Um, as much as wearing maybe a more tightly fitted mask is gonna be important. And then um, the public health emergency order 2020, uh, 2021-20 that was issued um, last week was in effect and it's um, two items were important on there that um, we mentioned is basically the um, the movie theaters are now allowed to operate at 50% and then um, that we have holiday guidelines that we issued for Halloween, all the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all of those guidelines are um, on the Navajo Department of Health website. But for Halloween, since it's the immediate holiday, um, there are several options that you can do with um, keeping social distancing in mind and reducing gathering as participating in community virtual Halloween contests, board games, craft nights, or pumpkin carving with your family, hosting a Zoom party with friends and family um, and with complete games and scary movies or um, contests, um, costume contests. I know there's people that have access to live streaming, can do watch parties, um, watching the same movie, um, doing a scary movie night, watch your favorite fear-filled Halloween movie, Halloweening at home, share pictures of Halloween themed costumes, decorations, food, and social media. In home trick or treating, allow your kids to go from one candy station to another through the house or your or yard. Um, so get creative with that. A spooky cook, cook off, wear your costume and become the costume de or during dinner. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can still celebrate Halloween, scavenger hunt the house, create different themed rooms through out the house or yard and sing kids on a scavenger hunt. Halloween karaoke, Halloween pin, pinata are just things that you can do at home safely uh, within your ho own household as well. And um, with a um, gathering limit of 15 or fewer individuals. So right now, any regular classroom parties are really prohibited also in the new public health order. Um, so any sort of, um, um, activities around kids and Halloween. The only thing that I'll probably talk about is the trunk or treat. So, but um, if you are gathering, um, it is um, making sure that you are um, 15 or persons or fewer or fewer. And also if you're doing something outdoors, making sure you follow the outdoor recreational events. And then there's also the drive-through um, guidelines where it allows 50 vehicles. So those are still allowed. And so just making um, sure those um, protocols are in place when, if you are planning a Halloween event. And I know one thing that we mentioned last week regarding the guidelines is if you're hosting 
something, make sure if you are sick or if you are hosting, do not host the event. If you're sick and you want to attend the event, stay, um, stay home. So social distancing is definitely important. Limiting contact with people six, six feet from each other and then package individual um, to-go treats can be distributed. Um, and those are at the trunk or treat um, events. So that's where we're at with the Halloween event. So trunk or treat, uh, trunk or treat is available. And so making sure that um, there are maintain, maintaining six feet distancing and also making sure there's clear foot trafficking and making sure that um, individual package um, treats are provided at the end of the event. And so when you're thinking about um, Halloween this um, this year, I think one thing to always remember the timeline of incubation. And um, this is one from last year that I still pull up, but it's all, always really very relevant because once you go to a holiday party, um, sometimes you don't really see your symptoms till 10 days later. Um, Jane here, she learned she was exposed to someone that was positive. And so there's definitions for close exposure, meaning 15 minutes um are less um and 15 minutes or more sorry and three feet distancing and so there's guidelines out there where contact tracers identify um what that is and who you need to contact so she probably um, was in close contact with someone she gets tested and she's negative um and so th the current guidelines um, require you to get tested multiple times the one right after an exposure and then one a couple of days later to confirm. So even though you're doing multiple testing, do that to ensure that there isn't any symptoms that are going to come up later. So if she was going to get tested again, um, which she did 10 days later until she um, was exposed to that. So tests come back negative. She goes around and about and in things we say no, like um, she goes shopping, she visits family thinking she's not infectious, but she is. So now she has exposed 10 other people and her symptoms don't show up till day 10. So I think just the reality of moving around and about is very important. And also um, if you have allergies or you have the regular flu, just make sure that um, you stay home as well. And then some people will not show any symptoms. So in those individuals, we, we define as asymptomatic someone not showing symptoms, but if they've been in close contact, they shouldn't be around others because they could have infect others and they can still carry the virus. So um, just to make sure if you are a younger, which in most cases are asymptomatic, and so symptoms may appear later and may not appear and very maybe very minimal, um, but mainly just to understand that if you know that um, you've been exposed to someone, just because you don't have symptoms doesn't mean you can't transmit. So just knowing the, that um, that is that is a high likely probability that you can infect others when you're not symptomatic. Um, so it's just important. And then that really goes back to not going to work when you're sick. And we've had a lot of workplace exposures for the tribal government and schools as well. So people are still reporting to work when they're sick and we and this is one way that we can stop transmission and our transmissions are really high right now so if people are experiencing any sickness they absolutely should just stay home and that's where i think we are um really having issues with these exposures and so um us at nice kanshi then hit the scale so that's all i want to say and i don't know how else to say it because um, our numbers are going up, and the more people that are sick, we don't know to the extent how many will need, will have severe illness or not. And so our hospitals around in New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona are going to start and have been dealing with um, people that have um, do not have COVID with delayed care. And so during this pandemic, we delayed a lot of our healthcare services, and now. We are at getting admitted and we are now receiving services at the same time COVID numbers are starting to increase. And you can just imagine the long um, time that we're experiencing with COVID, our physicians, our providers are burnt out. Um, so I think we all have an individual responsibility to make sure that we don't get infected. And we know that Oshin and his ass and Dunlini, Bahwata needs in. 
we really need to take care of our, our healthcare providers on that level because there's not a lot of them. And so, and we, and they have been providing and responding to the pandemic for this long. So just be cognizant of that, and also be prepared. Um, if you do get COVID, have a plan in place. That means don't travel, have others help you, have others feed your, uh, the animals that you have, have others take care of your errands. And if you have children that are not exposed, um, have someone else take care of them if you have that ability to do that. And if you don't feel safe, find um, a way to isolate either at a hotel or other, other places. The only hotel isolation services that are being provided right now is through the New Mexico sites. Uh, so in New Mexico, I know you can work with your healthcare provider where you get tested, if it's an Indian Health Service facility or a another facility in New Mexico, there are still isolation services. Then lastly, I just wanna know that we do have a reporting exposure. Anyone can report um, a school, a business, and they're all required to, so we can do immediate contact tracing and case investigations. So make sure you report to the Navajo Department of Health webpage, and there's a red button that says report exposure. So um, with that, I just want to end with um, staying home is a safe place. And if you are traveling, make sure you are safe, um, safely practicing um, protocols. And then if you decide to trick or treat off the reservation, we're not saying no, but you shouldn't um, just because we know kids don't have access to vaccines. And as I mentioned, a lot of our younger adults also can be asymptomatic and not known the difference. So I just wanted to thank everyone for being on the call and I want to go ahead and um, give it to Captain Johnson. He's with the Navajo area office and also a member with our Health Command Operations Center. So take it away, Captain Johnson. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Just wanted to make sure that uh, you can hear me. I see I'm finally on. Hey, this is, uh, as, as Dr. Jim indicated, this is Captain Brian Johnson with Navajo Area Indian Health Service, and I serve as the uh, Acting Deputy Area Director for Navajo Area Office there in St. Michael's. Just want to say hello today to all the uh, folks uh, listening in to today's town hall session. And I also want to take a moment, I, I always like to take a moment and thank uh, uh, President Nez, Vice President Lizer, uh, Dr. Jim, and um, Del Yazi as well. And oftentimes Dr. Fowler, of course, is, 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 uh, participates on these town hall sessions. And uh, all of these individuals have done an outstanding job, uh, just from my opinion, over the last uh, year and a half. And um, it's just amazing the work that's been done and the continuing transparency that um, that we see uh, continuing in in uh, reporting and providing information to the, the Navajo people. Um, just wanted to make a few comments today. I wanted to uh, reassure the Navajo people uh, across Navajo Nation and beyond that uh, the Indian Health Service, we, we continue certainly to work with our, our tribal and, and urban Indian uh, organization partners. And, um, and, and some may say, well, well, exactly what does that mean in terms of working together? And, and that means um, across, we, we look at the Navajo Nation uh, from, again, a bird's eye view, where we try to understand the healthcare system that is there. And um, by working, all of our organizations working together, whether they're a tribal health organization, whether it's the Navajo Nation Department of Health or Indian Health Service facilities, or even private healthcare facilities that are on the Navajo Nation. We do work together and share information and uh, have since the beginning of the pandemic. And um, a lot of that has been led by uh, Dr. Jill Jim as a dire executive director of the Navajo Department of Health. And uh, we do share information concerning you know, case numbers and uh, test positivity rates and looking at our hospital capacities and doing our contact tracing activities and just looking at um, COVID-19 infections across the nation and understanding any patterns that are developing so that we can work together as a team to address uh, any issues that are going on out there. And, and uh, I think these town halls have been a big part of transparency throughout the pandemic in terms of the activities that are going on um, who is covering what uh, actions 
And uh, again, that, that has been an outstanding way to get the message out to uh, individuals across Navajo. Um, certainly, it's, it's been a difficult year and a year and a half. I mean, uh, not too long from now, we would be reaching a two year mark. So good solid year and a half. And uh, we're certainly grateful for the partnership that we've had with uh, Navajo Nation leadership. I know that we've been in, um, in direct conversations and in meetings, and, and uh, I know that COVID has, has in some times uh, kept us apart, and so we've used virtual means of, of communicating, and we continue to do that in a responsible way. But um, we have uh, been in contact uh, continuously with uh, Navajo Nation leadership, in, including the Office of President and Vice President, and many of the Navajo uh, Nation Council uh, delegates who have also reached out over time uh, to inquire about very specific items or assistance on various issues. And we do thank you for your continued uh, participation, interest, and leadership uh, on the COVID-19 issue. And um, so, so we'll continue to do that. Uh, we, we certainly will continue to monitor and make sure we're working together as a team. Um, I just wanted to mention a few things in terms of vaccines and vaccine boosters and some other items. But uh, to date, when we look at the um, Native American healthcare system across the United States, we talk about Indian country, there has been over 1.7 million doses of uh, vaccine uh, provided across uh, the United States. That's, that's a tremendous amount of, of vaccine that's been provided. And we're certainly excited uh, to, to be a part of that. And, and when we look nationally, over 53% of American Indian Alaska Native adult patients are fully vaccinated. And uh, we've heard some statistics here, and you'll hear some more in a momentarily from um, Dale Yazi with the Navajo Nation Epicenter today. But um, we do know that the Navajo Nation has excelled. And uh, in terms of, uh, by comparison, in terms of vaccinations, COVID-19 vaccinations here locally, and um, we'll continue to advocate and encourage that, that that activity continue, of course, as we know that the vaccines are the safest and most effective way to prevent COVID-19, including the most serious consequences of the disease. So um, we know that uh, the vaccines not only help prevent uh, infections, but for any individuals who, who do still get the infection, we know that it reduces the uh, consequences of those infections and uh, hopefully does help uh, limit hospitalizations and of course uh, deaths as well. So we are, uh, we are extremely focused with Indian Health Service and also our partners here on the Navajo Nation of staying ahead of the virus and making sure that we have optimal protection uh, against COVID-19 infection, severe illness and death, and we're gonna continue to do that. And I just wanna make the comment that um, I know there's a lot of information out there and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more here, a little bit about misinformation, but it's very critical in these situations that uh, you'll, you'll hear the term following si the science. And uh, that's exactly what we've been doing in the Indian Health Service. And I know in conjunction with the Navajo Nation, it's following the science uh, we look at the research, we look at the numbers that are factual, and that's how decisions are made. Uh, we don't base it on loose information or unofficial information or unofficial data. We simply follow the science. Um, I know that there's been a lot of interest over time about vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine, the, the booster shots. And um, we know that the uh, FDA recently um, authorized booster doses for COVID-19 for uh, vaccines for Moderna and uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccines. And the FDA had previously authorized booster doses for the uh, Pfizer vaccine as well. Uh, the latest uh, information and authorization also allows the option of uh, healthcare providers to mix and match uh, booster doses of the Pfizer Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. And so um, following the FDA's action, the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices unanimously recommended the administration of vaccine boosters for certain individuals 
and the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control uh, Director, has accepted those recommendations. So uh, basically, that was a lot to be said, but it's basically looking at the, um, the vaccines that have been authorized for use um, and approved for uh, boosters uh, through the FDA and the CDC, and uh, we continue to encourage folks who are eligible for booster shots to um, uh, take advantage of that. And um, we do anticipate that the CDC will publish uh, revised uh, clinical considerations for the use of COVID vaccines based on uh, these recommendations. And um, the guidance, uh, some guidance was re recently issued by the Centers for Disease Control. Um, I also just want to make sure that um, we talk a little bit about, uh, you know, in terms of the boosters that are now authorized for all people 18 years and older who received the uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine at least a two months ago. And um, for individuals who um, a, a single COVID-19 vaccine booster dose is also recommended for certain individuals who received two doses of Pfizer and Moderna vaccine at least six months ago. So these are all important things to be aware of, but I know it can be confusing at times. And so what I recommend is if, um, if you haven't uh, heard or received any uh, information and, and if you've had the two uh, boosters dose or the, the two vaccine uh, dose series uh, from Moderna and Pfizer, and you have questions about a uh, booster shot and whether or not you should have that, certainly reach out to your local healthcare provider and uh, inquire uh, as to your eligibility for that locally. And then also for those who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine at least two months ago, also um, reach out and inquire about that as well, the booster shot for yourself. So um, I also just wanted to um, mention that the FDA and CDC have really studied the booster shots and, and they found that they're safe and effective and that they do provide protection based on the latest da data and evidence. So uh, after thorough and independent uh, transparent review process. So there has been uh, a number of scientists and folks in the research of the uh, booster shots and have found that the, they are safe and effective and they continue again to follow the science based on this. Uh, so that's, that's very uh, critical for the public to understand. So um, the FDA and CDC will continue to, to look at the data um, as it is available to determine whether and when groups of people should uh, become eligible for boosters. So there are different stages for individuals who, who will become eligible for booster shots. And um, again, that's why I recommend reaching out to your local health facility. You'll need to be able to provide them information on the specific uh, manufacturer of um, a vaccine that, that you received. So for example, if you received a Pfizer two dose series, that's what they would need to know. And um, if you received Moderna, two dose series, or if you had previously received the uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, then they would need to know that in order to help you uh, with the determination on your booster eligibility. So um, also wanted to mention, we know that there have been um, approvals for individuals 12 years and older. Um, over time, um, it, it initially was uh, it didn't include the 12 year olds that 15 to the 15 year old group, but over time we, we do know that those were um, vaccines were approved for those age groups. And now um, last month in terms of the five to 11 year old age group, uh, Pfizer has announced its plan to submit its data for COVID-19 vaccine for the five to 11 year olds before winter. And the FDA is actually currently looking at the safety of the vaccine and reviewing the uh, data to ensure the, the benefits of the vaccine for school aged children outweigh the risks. So that is actually happening right now for the five to 11 year old age group. And um, we'll continue to share information here as that process unfolds. And of course that information can also be looked at on the CDC website that, that is available uh, online 
And again, making sure that we only use those reputable websites in order to understand COVID-19 and the various uh, activities that are going on. And um, we know that uh, many uh, parents have expressed eagerness for uh, their younger children to be eligible for vaccines. And so uh, they want to reduce the chances of virus spreading to their households. Uh, while we understand this, that the FDA and uh, the CDC must make sure the COVID-19 vaccine meets all the safety standards. So um, I, I just uh, would want to mention that uh, we remain patient for the 5 to 11 year old age group, and we should know something fairly soon as uh, the safety is uh, really being looked at and making sure that that's safe. Um, and whenever we start talking about this, whenever we do receive more information about the, the start, we'll say the pediatric vaccination program, it's all going to depend on the uh, independent FDA and CDC process and timeline. However, I just want to make sure that folks understand that the planning, planning efforts that are um, already underway mean that uh, the healthcare team is ready to begin vaccinations in the days following any final CDC recommendation for the 5 to 11 year old age group. So again, we'll be, we'll be monitoring that closely. And we know that the uh, current administration um, has stated that it's secured ample vaccine supply for our nation's children. So if there's any questions out there about the supply of vaccine um, and concerns about that, we do know that um, from, the, from the very top that we're hearing that we have ample vaccine supplies. Uh, should the 5 to 11 year old age groups be uh, fully approved, then um, certainly we'll bet that uh, vaccine will be distributed and then basically millions of doses will be shipped out nationwide to states, tribes and territories. And uh, the Indian Health Service, uh, they're certainly working to ensure that doses are distributed efficiently and equitably across the various jurisdictions. So um, I think that's a, we're in an exciting time right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be hearing more about the uh, 5 to 11 year old age group in uh, the days to come. And uh, we're going to continue working with our tribal partners, certainly, to make sure that uh, as this rolls out, we're sharing information on this venue as well as in other venues as well on Navajo Nation. And um, we're wanting to make sure also that uh, one of the key target populations, of course, when we talk about the 5 to 11 year old age groups is uh, our parents. Of course, we want our parents to be well informed and engage in, in, in decision making for their children. And so uh, there will be uh, much information that will be shared. The Health, Department of Health and Human Services will conduct national public uh, education campaigns to reach out to parents and guardians with uh, information about the vaccine and the uh, risks that uh, COVID-19 poses to children. So, again, that information will be provided, again, in a transparent way so that uh, parents will be able to make their decisions based on, on that data. I also wanted to mention real quick that in terms of COVID-19 testing, we've heard here earlier about the, uh, the positivity rate and we, the, the number of cases here that was reported uh, earlier today and yesterday was, you know, over 100 cases. And so um, that's, that's, again, we're seeing this uptick in cases. So it's important that individuals understand that testing still remains available at um, all IHS and tribal health organization healthcare facilities on the Navajo Nation, we do recommend that if you have any concerns about symptoms that you may have, or if you are if you think you're dealing with allergies, but you're not sure, or if you believe that you've been directly exposed, that um, you do get tested and that those services will continue to be available. Just want to re reassure you of that. Um, also wanted to mention again, I earlier on, I mentioned the, the importance of utilizing um, only um, reputable uh, information sources during this time of COVID-19. We've mentioned it here on this town hall on a number of occasions about misinformation and what that can lead to. And there is a lot of misinformation uh, that has been shared out in the public. It's not based on fact. Um, oftentimes, it, um, it's dealing with myths that um, we have to end up dispelling. 
And so please make sure that uh, when you're looking at information, when you're receiving information, that it's, um, it's, you're looking at accurate information. Be sure to check before you uh, share that or send that on through a text message or through social media or otherwise. Um, it, it, we've just been exposed to a great deal of information uh, in social media, the news, public health guidance, and, and, and various rumors. And while, while information has helped us to stay safe throughout the pandemic, it, it has times led to confusion, and we don't want that for our Navajo Nation people. Uh, we want people to have the accurate information so that they can make uh, the wisest decisions for themselves and their families. So uh, again, uh, I certainly recommend using the uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website. Uh, you can uh, type in cdc.gov, and uh, that information is definitely uh, based on uh, fact and based on science, and uh, certainly has a lot of information on symptoms, on treatment, on schools and quarantine and travel and other important topics. So again, cdc.gov, and you can just put in the search engine uh, COVID-19, and uh, it'll get you in the right place if you're using the internet for information for COVID-19. Um, I also just wanted to end by talking about flu vaccine. Uh, while it's easy to get caught up and focused on COVID-19, we also have to remember it's that time of year for our annual flu vaccines. If you haven't had a vaccination yet, that's something also that uh, the local healthcare facilities have um, throughout Navajo Nation. And uh, we certainly uh, want to stress the importance of flu vaccines as we enter the flu season and uh, wanting to reduce the overall burden of respiratory illness, which is uh, critical to also protecting our population at risk. So uh, please reach out and make sure uh, you and your loved ones are getting vaccinated for the flu. Very important for our families locally. And on a final note, uh, I know that Dr. Jim touched on it earlier, and I, I want to echo those comments. Um, you know, when I look across the Navajo Nation and I look at the healthcare teams that have been working so diligently uh, on COVID-19 and many other uh, healthcare aspects for the last year and a half, we do see that and we do hear that the team members are, they continue to be exhausted. They're doing what they can to, to find time to uh, take for themselves. And uh, we certainly support that, uh, but we also know that right now staffing, healthcare staffing is quite challenging at this point in time in the COVID-19 pandemic. And so it's, uh, it requires a lot of um, ask for the healthcare team to step up and, and work uh, oftentimes longer and harder. And uh, it, despite the fact that they've been uh, fighting this disease for over a year and a half, and I want folks to understand that and, and understand that this is why it's so important to get our family members vaccinated, our friends vaccinated, ourselves vaccinated, because we know that it's the best tool in our toolbox to stop this disease. And um, we just need to support our healthcare team. They're supporting us, and in turn, we should re uh, support them. And so I also want to just ask that if you have the time, if, if you can take some time when you're out in the community Please uh, say a kind word to our healthcare team members, whether it's nursing, whether it's the uh, doctors, whether it's a housekeeper or others uh, who work in the business side of the hospitals or health clinics. Please take time to uh, say an encouraging word to them to uh, uplift their spirits because we know that this has been an extremely long battle. And I can tell you they very much appreciate hearing from community members and hearing positive comments and encouraging words. Um, I, I do promise you they do, uh, they, they do look for that and they do take that seriously. So um, any support that can be provided in that manner is much appreciated and uh, we'll continue this uh, to fight the good fight against this disease. So, so let's continue to reach out and, and, and let's reach community immunity. Let's protect ourselves, protect our families and protect our elders. And um, please get vaccinated for COVID-19. And at this point in time, I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Dale Yazi with the Navajo Nation uh, Epicenter, and he has some information to share for us as well. Uh, Dale, you have the mic when, when you're ready.
Captain Johnson, thank you. Hello, Yate, Shikero, Shidene. Thank you all for, for tuning in. My name is Dell. I am with the, the Naval Epidemiology Center and our COVID epidemiology team, uh, team member, and I will be providing uh, an update on our uh, latest numbers as far as our gating measures um, over a two-week time period from October 7th through October 21st. Uh, so before I begin, I some of you have probably seen this slide, but uh, those of you who are new to the call, I want to acknowledge our epidemiology team for COVID uh, disease surveillance on Navajo Nation. We are a large uh, uh, epidemiology team made up of team members representing these um, uh, programs or organizations, our Navajo Epi Center, IHS, the Navajo Area, IHS, uh, the 638 facilities, tribal health organizations. We have uh, folks helping us from the CDC and the CDC Foundation, also from Hopkins and COPE and TGEN from the Flagstaff uh, office or campus who they're helping us with the, the sequencing or the strain surveillance uh, on Navajo Nation. Um, and also, of course, um, our state partners from Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. Um, we're all partnering um, to provide uh, the numbers I'm going to show uh, here. So President Nez already showed this, but I'll go over it really quickly. Recent cases and trends over a 60-day time period. Um, as you can see, the bars here have uh, increased over time, including our the, the red line, the nine-day weighted center moving average has gone up. Really, I'd like to identify this bar here is October 2nd. So really throughout the, the month of October, we've seen uh, an increase in cases um, up to our last reporting period, uh, which is uh, October 21st, which is last Thursday. So. Um, We'll be updating the numbers um, next week, um, but for now, we are uh, seeing an increase in cases across Navajo Nation. Our infection rate over a seven-day period is at 1.07, and it remains about the same as the last reporting period. Uh, this is geographically and, you know, spatially on Navajo Nation, the COVID situation um, here on the map is, uh, you know, the IHS service areas including our bordering states, um, all in red with their seven-day incidence rate of over 100 cases plus um, per 100,000 people. So that's uh, a, the, red, the red level. Um, and only Winslow here, the Winslow service area is in a lighter shade brown here for 50 to 99 cases per 100,000. Um, but overall, we are seeing um, cases throughout the Navajo Nation, um, including our bordering states. So over a seven-day period, there were 548 new cases from October 15th through October 21st, so which puts our incidence uh, rate at 346 cases per 100,000 people, uh, which is in our the red um, level of our gating matrix. Some additional metrics that we look at is the test capacity. Um, our seven-day test positivity rate is at 14.4%. Um, it did go up just a little bit from 14%, um, our last reporting period. We are over a seven-day period. There are about 1,000 tests being conducted every day for seven days. Um, and this, the testing, there's a lot of testing going on um, across Navajo Nation. Hospital capacity remains uh, pretty stable within, you know, 60 uh, percentile, 66 percent for regular hospital beds as far as average daily occupancy, and then ICU beds at 68 um, percent average daily occupancy. Uh, we are contact tracers to daily case ratios at one. Our threshold for this is five, so we are way below five, so we are trying to 
um, hire and bring on additional contact tracers um, across the Navajo Nation. So I know IXS, the Navajo area IXS is currently, I believe has 17 contact tracer positions. So uh, as Captain Johnson mentioned, you know, they're, so they're currently hiring. Uh, if you can, I don't know, reach out to some of our Navajo people who are interested in being a contact tracer on Navajo Nation, please contact the, the Navajo area office um, in St. Michael's uh, next to, you know, Window Rock. So um, this is our, the latest numbers for vaccine across Navajo Nation. It's residents only, um, people who, you know, live on the nation. Um, there are 105,692 uh, Navajo Nation residents that are fully vaccinated. And so that's uh, uh, the eligible residents age, uh, you know, eligible for vaccination ages 12 years and older is that. So we're at, I know President Mantine has mentioned this, we're at about 70% of our Navajo Nation residents, uh, people 70% um, vaccinated. And, but this total population of all ages, zero on up, we're at 57%. This uh, president has also showed this. We are, you know, comparing Navajo Nation and the orange uh, line here uh, to the U.S., the, the darker blue color here. The U.S., you know, is seeing less cases across the country. However, Navajo Nation, we are seeing uh, uh, an increase in cases, especially throughout, you know, the month of uh, October. This is also a seven-day incidence bar chart that we generate um, over a seven-day period from October 15th through the 21st. The yellow line is Navajo Nation. We did trend the wrong way. We went up about, uh, I'd say like 20 spots. We were down here before uh, the last reporting period and we jumped to number eight position here. Um, and also our bordering states, especially Colorado and Utah, are, have also seen increasing cases. So we're all, I think, essentially in the top 10 with uh, Colorado and Utah uh, in comparison to um, the U.S. This is the, the strain surveillance as of Report 25, which is October 20th, which is last week, uh, last Wednesday. Um, hopefully we'll update this um, soon. But the only change here is the Delta variant from Report 24 to 25. It went from 568 to 621. I think that's like 50, 50 plus cases that were identified as a, the new Delta variant. But the rest of the variants and the numbers here remain the same from Report 24 to 25. So Delta variant is really the, the dominant variant on the Navajo Nation. Very similar to the U.S. This is across the U.S. Uh, according to CDC, the orange bars here is all Delta variant, making up about 99.5% of all variants. So the Delta variant is really the, the dominant uh, variant um, even uh, across the U.S. This is a seven-day case rate um, across the U.S. within our region, the Four Corners, and, you know, Southwest area, our bordering states, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, really are, have seen an increase in cases over a seven-day period. This is community transmission. Again, across the U.S., you see mostly red um, even within our region, the, all the counties, I don't know if you can see the counties here, the counties within Navajo Nation are all red, meaning there's high COVID transmission. This is our high risk uh, chapter list. Um, and the, the incidence rate of um, greater than or equal to 100 cases per 100,000 people is the, the threshold that puts a chapter in a high risk uh, chapter list over a two week period. So this green green um, columns here are the, the, the new chapters that made the list for this reporting period. There are 48 chapters that made the list. And over time, uh, some people wanted to see the trend, like which chapters are consistently on this list. If you go back to six weeks, back to September 10th, uh, these 13 chapters 
have been on the high risk uh, chapter list on a consistent basis for at least six weeks. So, you know, I, I like to mention that these chapters, uh, most, I think most of these chapters are, are on the bigger chapters, or one of the bigger chapters are based on, you know, population size. And so they're, and also where they're geographically located on the nation, they're along like uh, kind of high traffic areas or throughways to get from one part of the res to the other are some of these chapters. And some of them like Upper Fruitland are next to a border town like Farmington. So these are the, the 13 chapters that have been on the list um, consistently for at least six weeks. And then uh, the high risk uh, level assessment here recommendation, we remain high, uh, red threshold, Delta variant may be the, the, the likely uh, source for driving the, the cases currently. Our test positivity remains high at 14.4%. Uh, hospital capacity remains stable based on our, our, the numbers that we, the facilities report to us. Um, and the main drivers of transmission is mainly family gatherings. People gather for different occasions and some people coming from off the nation to visit family on the nation. Sometimes those are ways, uh, m one of the main ways of um, folks uh, getting COVID. Um, and so, and also there's uh, some cases, you know, in schools and also some workplaces and and some, uh, um, some of those uh, areas are where we're seeing most of the cases, but it's mostly family gatherings. Last, uh, we remain in the red level based according to our gating matrix um, that we follow for, for Navajo Nation. So um, this is my last slide. And I believe I'm the last presenter. So um, if I am, I see Vice President still on the call. I don't know if he wants to make some last comments, but um, if not, I'm the last presenter. So uh, that's our, those are our latest gating measures and numbers for for Navajo Nation, and I'll stop here, and thank you all for, for joining our uh, the town hall. Thank you. I'll go ahead.